Okay, so we've got this single page application working pretty well, and there's just a couple more things I wanna talk about. The first one is how HTMX restores page state when we cycle through the history by clicking on the back button, and also how we can kind of control how that works a little bit. So right now, if we add some pages to the history by clicking around the site, then we can start hitting the back button in a moment to go through them all again. And when we do that, we're gonna see that HTMX restores the previous pages for us with their state being the same as at the time we originally viewed them. And HTMX does this by storing snapshots of the pages in local storage and then reaching for them when it needs them. I can demo that by opening up the dev tools and then we wanna to go to the application tab and then you want to go to local storage and choose localhost port 3000. When we do that, we can see this HTMX history cache entry, which is basically a bunch of history objects where each one has the URL, content, which is the whole HTML string of the page, and a page title. So HTMX can quickly load this content for pages in the history when it needs to. Now, since we've just added a few pages to the history, I want to go to the elements tab now so we can see the HTML and then start hitting the back button. But before we do that, watch this content over here and see where it flashes because where it flashes indicates the area where HTMX performs an update on the fly. And you can see that as I do this, it's the whole body tag which gets updated and everything inside it. And that's fine to be honest, but there's actually things on the page which don't really need updating in this body tag when we go to different pages, like this whole header area. And there's actually a simple way to tell HTMX to only update a certain section of the page when making this content swap when we're cycling through the history, like hitting the back button. Mm. And that's by using an HTMX attribute called HX history else. So then I'm in the layout file and you can see here that we've got all the header content above the content block where specific page content gets rendered. So it's only the content block stuff that actually changes from page to page. And all this header stuff stays the same no matter what page we're on. And none of that stuff really needs updating when we cycle through the history. So what we could do is wrap this content block with a div tag. And you wanna make sure that you indent this block section right here. So we're saying all of this block content goes inside the div tag. And then on the div tag, we apply an attribute. So parentheses first, and the attribute is hx-history-elt. And this tells HTMX the boundary of the content which needs swapping when we cycle through the history entries. And it says, only swap the content inside this div where we apply this attribute. Anything outside of this scope, you don't need to update. So all this header content right here doesn't need swapping. Okay then, so now let's add a few more entries to the history by clicking on some of those links. And also make sure that you've got your dev tools open on the elements tab so we can see which section of content gets updated. And now, if we start hitting the back button, we can see that it's just that div with the HX history elt attribute that starts flashing and the header tag above it doesn't and the body doesn't, which indicates that only the content inside that div is being updated now. So then that's how we can change the default history boundary, if you like, within the application. Probably for a lot of cases, you don't need to use this because the default behavior of updating the body tag is probably good enough, right? But for those that do need to change it, this is how you do it.